They're coming to get you, Barbara. Orson Welles was born on May 6, 1915, in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Now, Welles didn't stick around in Wisconsin for very long. I mean, who would? But in two short decades, he would be a theater sensation, a radio sensation, and just uh, not too long after that would go on to direct what is still considered to be one of the finest, greatest American films of all time, Citizen Kane. Now, we will not be talking about Orson Welles this evening. Why? Because this is Live Scream Theater. Hello! Welcome back to another season, another series, another grouping of uh, Milwaukee Records Live Scream Theater, the intermittent video series where I, Matt, uh, hang out here online with you. We watch old public domain horror and sci-fi movies and we chat along in the comments and we have a lovely time. Welcome back. It is great to be back. How are you doing? Hope you're all hanging in there. Hope you're all vaccinated. I'm vaccinated and feeling great, feeling like a million bucks. I hope you are as well. Now, you may be asking yourself, Matt, why, oh why, are we doing a live scream theater in the spring. Isn't this usually a autumn, fall time affair? Well, I'm glad you asked, but we have a, a very uh, easy explanation for that. Uh, once again, Live Scream Theater is brought to you by the Milwaukee Film Festival, and the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival is happening in spring, May 6th through the 20th. Check it out. Here it is. May 6th through the 20th. It is a online affair this year, just like in 2020. Uh, but if you uh, had any experience with uh, doing it last year, it's fantastic. You, down a, uh, you download an app to your phone, to your laptop, to your television set. You buy your tickets, you buy your passes, you put in a little code, and voila, there you go. You have up to... Uh, I think there are almost 90 feature films this time around, and there are over 100 shorts spread out over many, many fantastic programs. Check it out. The full lineup is uh, online now for the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival. You can find that at mkefilm.org. And uh, you can download a PDF of the entire thing. Passes are on sale now. Individual tickets will go on sale I believe, uh, the day of the festival, May 6th, opening day. Mm. And once again, uh, as always, I apologize for the hair. Now, why did I bring up Orson Welles earlier? Well, we are obviously not going to be talking about Orson Welles. Well, we'll be talking about him a little bit. Uh, we're definitely not watching any uh, Orson Welles films on live Scream Theater. But if we're not talking about the greatest director to come out of Kenosha, uh, we'll talk about perhaps the second greatest director to come out of Kenosha, Wisconsin, and that man's name is Bert I. Gordon. Mr. Gordon was born in uh, September 24th, 1922, not long after Wells, born in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and has had a film career that has stretched for nearly 70 years. Uh, began making films in the early to mid-50s. His uh, most latest work uh, was released, uh, his directorial work was uh, released in 2014, and he is still alive and kicking today at the age of 98, Mr. Bert I. Gordon. And we can see him right there. Oh, there he is. And yes, for the next four weeks, we will be watching Bert I. Gordon films, some glorious 
50s and uh, even into the early 60s B movies, uh, things like The Amazing Colossal Man and tonight's film Earth vs. the Spider from 1958. We're going to be uh, getting a lot of uh, great inside information uh, from Mr. Gordon himself, uh, thanks to this book, The Amazing Colossal World of Mr. B.I.G., an autobiographical journey by Bert I. Gordon. Of course, uh, yes, his nickname at uh, one point was Mr. Big or Mr. B.I.G., obviously because of his initials, uh, Bert Ira Gordon, and also because a lot of his films featured big things. So uh, I just picked this book up. You can still uh, find these online. You can purchase a brand new one. It's a really fun book, really uh, highly recommended, a real casual, uh, chatty kind of look back on his long and illustrious career. So I think uh, that about covers it. Uh, let's 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 just get into the film. Tonight's film, Earth versus the Spider from 1958. It's got everything you could want. It's got the Earth. It's got a spider, and it's got some teenagers that look like they're 35 years old. I'll be uh, popping in and out uh, throughout the film uh, to share some uh, behind-the-scenes info uh, from uh, Mr. Gordon and other stuff. Uh, there's going to be some classic commercials tossed in here, some classic 80s and 90s commercials. Everyone always enjoys that. But yeah, like I said before, feel free to chat along in the comments. I'll be there in the comments as well, chatting along. And check out the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival coming up May 6th through 20th. So let's get to the film, Earth. Versus a Spider, directed by Bird Eye Gordon. This is Mike, remember? The boy with a golden heart and the memory of an elephant. Look, I remember it, see? Happy birthday, Carol. Thanks. Well, aren't you going to open it? Not now. What's wrong? It's dead. 
He didn't come home last night. So what? You know, it doesn't mean a thing. I mean, you know how he is. What do you mean, I know how he is? Nothing. I... Where didn't he come home from last night? Well, he went to Springdale yesterday to buy me a present. He said he'd be back before dinner last night, but he still hasn't come back yet. Well, that doesn't mean a thing, Carol. I mean, it isn't the first time. You're mean, Mike. And I don't want your silly present either. Here! Electrons jump from one electrode to the other because of the difference in the electrical potential between the two poles. Now, this one is the negative pole, from which electricity flows to the positive pole. We call the positive pole what? Anode. Correct. The negative pole? Anode. Good. If the voltage applied to these electrodes is increased to a greater amplitude, the electrical arc in turn will be greater. The larger the arc becomes, the more dangerous it is to anything that may be placed in its path. Now, one thing to remember is that the flow of electrons is always from the negative to the positive. The reason for this is that the positive pole has higher electrical potential. Now, in a simple voltaic cell, the positive electrode is made of copper, the negative of zinc. A similar experiment to the one we've conducted here was recently carried out at Wisconsin Tech, using a voltage many thousands of times greater, which produced a spark closely simulating actual lightning. It isn't the voltage that creates the hazard, it's the amount of current flow. If a man were to come in contact with a high voltage without a direct path to ground, it's probable that he wouldn't be harmed. However, if the circuit's completed to ground, the current will flow unhampered and cause him to be electrocuted. Now for our next experiment. If Mike, Carol, and Joe have finished their business. <laughs> blame people for what they think. Even Mother says he must have run into some of his old cronies and stayed in town. He had his paycheck with him. But I know it isn't true. Not this time. He promised he'd be back. I know something's happened to him. Sure it did. Maybe he ran out of gas. He'd never meet anybody on this road. Hold everything. What do you call that? tree up there and stretched across the highway and just between two trees. Who would do a thing like that? I don't know. I don't even know what this stuff is. You know, it looks like there's been a, an accident around here or something. There's figures. A guy driving along last night hits this thing stretched across the highway and cracks it up. See the glass? Wouldn't do too good for Joe's tires, would it? You know, maybe that's what happened to your old man. Where is he now? Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, Carol. He's probably hanging around some garage waiting for a busted fender to get fixed. Love, Dad. Okay, so he dropped it when the accident happened. What of it? If he was all right, he wouldn't leave it laying here. If he was in a garage, he'd call Mother and let her know. What's that down there? There's no pickup truck. That's what Dad was driving. It's Dad! 
thing he got out of it in time. Well, what if he didn't? Dad? Dad! What could a lad do? Well, if he's hurt, he could still be around somewhere. That's right, he could be. But he isn't. Unless he went in the cave. Oh, he wouldn't go in there. I never believed those stories about the cave. Maybe he doesn't either. You know, it got pretty cold last night. Suppose he couldn't walk far. I wanted to, well, keep warm and, and until help came. Come on, let's go take a look. seem to be in here either. Oh, let's not give up yet, please, Mike. Well, who said anything about giving up? We're just getting started. You know, this cave is supposed to go way back under that mountain forever. You're right. But I, I can't go without... I, we might as well look a little further, I guess. I 
can't see. Ah! Are you okay, Carol? I think so. What is this thing we fell in? I don't know. It's sticky, though. Time to get loose. <laughs> no, I can't. It's just like glue. You know, it, it's like that ropey stuff we, we found up on the road. What's that noise? I don't know. It's the regular net we're on, you know that? we need to talk about the teenagers in this movie now i know the whole you know th th there's this whole trope of teenagers being played by people clearly in their 20s and this film is no different i mean i grew up with like the original beverly hills 902 and 0 where everyone in that show was 48 years old but uh you can really uh th this film i'm surprised uh, really has some old looking teenagers now the uh, character of Carol, she is played by June Kenny. She was about 25 years old or so when this film was made. And uh, if she she certainly looks youthful, looks to, looks great, uh, but just has kind of an older sounding voice, doesn't it? I mean, she just sounds like a mom. Does not sound like a teenager at all. Mike, uh, her, her, her buddy, he's played by Gene Person. He was 21 or so around the time when uh, this film was made. He would later go on to become a uh, big hotshot kind of theater producer and uh, was one of the co-creators and uh, co-producers of the original uh, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, the uh, original musical from the 60s. Uh, now, I feel out of all of them, you know, they look fine, I guess. It's like, okay, fine, you're in your 20s, no big deal. But uh, let's take a look at this guy. Now, the character's name is Joe, and we're going to be seeing more of him later. Now, I mean, look at this guy. The actor's name is Troy Patterson, and uh, legitimately, he was, indeed, 35 years old at the time of this film, when this film was made. And there he is, just hanging out in class, being a 35-year-old at the front of the class. So he was about the same age as Bert I. Gordon was uh, when Gordon directed this film. Speaking of... Let's get a little uh, info about Mr. Gordon here. Now, he, uh, like I said, was born in Kenosha and uh, ended up graduating from uh, UW-Madison. Uh, after Madison, he went on, he moved out to the uh, Twin Cities to kind of get his start in, uh, in film, and then eventually moved out to Hollywood and, and made all these fantastic films. But uh, in his book, again, uh, The Amazing Colossal Worlds of Mr. B.I.G., he shares a little background about his days at uh, UW-Madison. He says, My first semi-professional movie activity happened during my second semester as a freshman at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. I borrowed a 35mm IMO movie camera from the school and convinced the film department at the university to permit me to, de to develop my 35mm film on their hand-operated processing drums. I then made a deal with Madison's downtown theaters to run my campus newsreels on the weekends. Not only was it the beginning of my future as a professional filmmaker, but I became an instant BMOC, big man on campus. The fraternities, sororities, and the university itself 
all called on me for newsreel coverage of their events, parties, and all. The football team permitted me to sit on their players' bench at all their games in order to film the action. The university asked me to prepare a reel of my newsreel highlights for them to place inside a time capsule that they were preparing to sink deep into the ground for future generations to look back on our generations. Fantastic stuff there from uh, Bird Eye Gordon from his days at the University of Wisconsin, Madison. Uh, I think that's all I got for that. Let's get back to the flick. Like I said before, the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival happening May 6th through the 20th. It's all online. Passes are on sale now. Tickets go on sale May 6th. Check it all out at mkefilm.org. And let's get back to Earth versus the Spider. Once upon an evening dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, it occurred to me how nice it would be to have my cousins over. For a party. Luckily, I had the presence of mind to visit cousins the day before and order a party sub. It's amazing how many people who can afford to eat anything simply love cousins. Cousins party sub, what a concept. My name's Lenore. I just love having my cousins over for a party. Well, I can't say for sure without having it analyzed, but it does look like a large piece of natural silk. What did we tell you? But that doesn't necessarily prove there's a giant spider. That part's pretty hard to swallow. But we saw it! Believe me, my son is not in the habit of lying, Mrs. Kingman. That isn't what Helen meant. Whether we believe their story or not, the man to see about it is the sheriff. Yeah, sure, see the sheriff. We did. He didn't believe them. Oh, yes, Mr. Kingman. What can I do for you? Well, don't go yet. It's only that high school teacher. Well, you know these teenagers as well as I do, Mr. Kingman. Yeah, what will they pull next, huh? <laughs> Spiders. I told them to bring me one, and I believe it. Well, I can't say I blame you, Sheriff. Naturally, I didn't call you up to get you to investigate abnormal insect life. But Flynn's still missing, I believe. The youngsters found traces of them out there. You may be doing yourself a favor if you looked into that. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth, Mr. Kingman. You took the words right out of my mouth. The fact of the matter is I've got my deputy Sanders out rounding up a search party right now. Get half a dozen men. Spencer, Haskell, maybe old Jake, anyone else that isn't busy. Bring them here and I'll swear them in. And, well, I'll need those two kids with us to point things out. And uh, if you want to come along, too, that's fine. Oh, don't you worry. We'll bring rifles in case we run into that spider. <laughs> Anything else on your mind? Well, speaking of spiders, are you sure rifles are just a thing? Insects have a pretty simple nervous system, Sheriff. You could plug holes in one all day and never hit a vital spot. If you want to be on the safe side, call the pest control people in Springdale. Have them send out all the DDT they can find. Good. <laughs> A giant spider. What next? Now well, bring your bug juice and let's go. Hey, what are we using it on? Does it make any difference? Well, I've got to mix the DDT according to what you want killed. What do I tell him, Professor? Uh, spiders? A 2 to 4% solution is the usual dose. Make it 50.
is Elks Hall, you know that? You think we'll find that girl's pa in here alive? We might. Spiders have a habit of stunning their prey with venom and storing them in a silk bag till they're ready to feed on them. Then they eat them up, I suppose. Not quite. They drain the liquid from the bodies, leaving only the skin and bones. Man, what a mind you've got. All right, let's look for Flynn. And don't lose sight of the man next to you. No sense in anyone getting lost. Just a minute. This is a waste of time. You know something? I haven't seen a spider yet, and I don't think we will. You will if he's still there. It'd be just our luck if he'd moved into the next county. <laughs> well, I don't think you'll be disappointed. There's something in here, all right. You naturally expect to find a certain amount of wildlife in a cave, rats, mice, bats, and so on. But you don't. You've been frightened out. Ah. Kingman. That's about as big as they come, I'd say. I wouldn't handle it if I were you. It might have rabies. Say a few words over it, Sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> it's your father. When you get back to town, make out a coroner's report. Just put down Jack Flynn as the name, and the cause of death, uh... It was a spider. Drained all the liquid out of his body. Uh, just put down cause unknown, and let the coroner worry about the rest. That's trouble with you, eggheads. You jump to conclusions. I know what I see, and I see a dead man. But, uh, I don't see any spider. Then we can do something about that. Mike, where was the web? Right through there. Wait a minute. You don't know what you're doing. You, you can't just walk in there. Well, why not? <laughs> Find any giant spider, Sheriff? Ah, oh, shut up. Get that DDT in here quick. On them. I suggest you spray that whole cavern so it'll get it when it comes back.
Carol. You think it'd be better if I talked to your mother first? No, thanks. I, I can do it. I really believe you can. The box with the bracelet. Are you sure you had it? It was in his pocket. Maybe I dropped it in there. You can't go back there now. The place is full of gas. We'll come back some other time together. When you get back to town, tell old Warren to get right out here and board this entrance up. Right, Sheriff. Well, if you do, I'd suggest you put a big wide door in it. The whole world is going to want to come here and take a look at that thing down there. Well, what's your idea? That the town should charge admission? That isn't what I was thinking of. You know what we eggheads are like, Sheriff. We want to know why this, how come that, what about the other. That's a matter of scientific interest to find out what made that creature tick. Well, it's too late now. It's dead. The spider is, but not the principle that caused it to grow. That's still for us to discover. Well, why bother? We have to put an end to it. Otherwise, there may be more giant spiders coming into the world. They may even be hatching from their eggs in some remote spot right now. Do you realize how easy it would be for them to overcome us humans? Then instead of being the hunters, we'd become the hunted. They'd be our masters. They'd live on us. Well, what would you suggest the sheriff's office of River Falls do about it, Mr. Kingman? Bring that spider up into the daylight, where it can be studied properly. Well, if you want to do it, go ahead. But leave me out. It's not my job, and I don't want any part of it. Okay, Sheriff. You know what's really, really unsettling? The sound of that spider. I don't know what it is. It's like a combination of a dinosaur crossed with a woman screaming. Very, very creepy. Now, we mentioned that uh, Bert I. Gordon, of course, from Kenosha, also shares a home with perhaps one of the greatest film directors of all time, Orson Welles, also born in Kenosha. And would you believe that these two Kenosha-born directors worked together at one point? Yes, they did. In 1972, Bert I. Gordon directed Welles in a film that was uh, both known as The Witching also known as necromancy. This was uh, certainly not a high point for Wells. Uh, no, no slag on uh, Mr. Gordon here, but uh, definitely, you know, Wells was kind of in the, in the woods there for quite a while throughout the 70s. But uh, the two did work together, and uh, the film is actually highly regarded. I, I vaguely remember seeing it back in the day, kind of when I went through a Wells kick, and it's, it's not, a bad, not a bad flick. I, I definitely need to check it out again. Now, uh, Bird Eye Gordon talks about his time uh, with Wells here in his book, and I'll uh, read a little bit about that. I directed a film starring Orson Welles, which was a special event in my career since I've always admired him as being one of the greatest talents, his Citizen Kane, a magnificent film. When the announcement appeared in Variety and The Hollywood Reporter that I had set him, I received numerous phone calls from people that had worked with him, telling me that Orson, that when Orson is on the set, I can forget the fact that I am the director, because he takes over. And also, I was advised never to mention his movie, Citizen Kane. The day before Wells' first day of shooting, I received a phone call from his secretary to inform me that Mr. Wells does not appear on the set before 10, and does not work after 4. Great! was my first thought, as I fought back a depression attack. I tried to think of a way to change the impending, disparaging event from happening, and came up with a possible approach to resolve it. I had my assistant do some research as to Orson's favorite foods and drink, and, armed with that information, set my plan in action. His first day of filming was on location in a magnificent mansion, with his dressing room in a grand bedroom and den with a private patio. When he arrived and was directed to his room, he discovered on his patio a professional chef dressed in white with hat and all, standing beside a Weber barbecue with a blazing fire next to a full-size refrigerator filled with his favorite delicacies, aged fillets, the finest of French cheeses, Russian caviar, his favorite French champagnes and wines, and more. As I was directing a scene for our movie in the huge living room of the mansion, I noticed Wells standing off to one side. As soon as the scene ended and I called cut, he walked over to me and shook my hand. Before I had a chance to say anything, he said, Bert, 
I want to apologize for my secretary's phone call yesterday, and I want you to disregard everything she told you. Whatever time you want me to appear on the set in the morning or however late you want me to work, I'm yours. And that was it. We went on location to Los Gatos, a small town in Northern California, and he was great in the movie, playing the part of a warlock heading a witchcraft coven. Coven? Coven. I enjoyed many fine dinners and interesting conversations with Orson, and, of course, I never mentioned his movie, Citizen Kane. How about that? And apologies for the uh, Orson Welles impression, or what kind of passed as a Orson Welles impression there. So let's get back to it. Live Scream Theater, thanks for tuning in tonight. The Milwaukee Film Festival, 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival, May 6th through 20th. Find out everything you need to know at MKE Film. Dot .org and let's get back to it Earth versus the Spider Give me a radio station that sounds like fun with lots of music QFM listeners know what they want Classic rock with a lot of variety and QFM listeners get it We've got a morning show that's really fun to listen to QFM delivers without the hype Oh, the repetition Milwaukee the bottom line reads just like this You'll get the rock without the schlock You bet your babushka mama keep rocking with 93 QFM Will the Badgers get a bowl bid? The story at 10.30. Ugly creature, isn't it? I can think of more suitable subjects for my camera club to take pictures of. What are you going to do with them? Send it to the papers? <laughs> Just the opposite. One big advantage of living in an isolated mountain community like River Falls is not having reporters calling all over the place. Yet. I'm going to send these photographs along with a complete report to Dr. Bergen. State you. Nancy, would you get me some close-ups? Oh, sure. Good old Bergen. I had him for biology in my junior year. You know, I know exactly what he's going to say. Gentlemen, this is a perfect specimen. Exquisite, exquisite. I can't quite appreciate the humor in it myself. I saw it when I was still alive. I expect the university is going to want it for experiment and dissection. Frankly, I'll feel relieved when they come and take it off my hands. I can't say I blame you. It is a little unhandy. Took a house mover from Riverdale to get it here. Cost me half my savings. Besides wanting my money back, I'd like to get the high school board off my neck. I suppose the university doesn't go for it. Well, you'd better. You think I'm going to all this bother merely because I've come across a scientific wonder? Not a bit. Somewhere in that hideous carcass are the genes that control organic growth. Men had better find out what made this creature so big and find out fast or we're all going to be in pretty serious trouble. Usually, if nature produces a freak, it dies immediately because it can't adapt itself to life. It's what we ordinarily call a bird spider. The wonder of it is it's perfect, Fraser. Perfect in every detail. Fraser, you hurt? Are you sure that thing's dead? I'm sure it's dead. Well, how come it kicked me? It's just a muscular contraction. Galvani's reaction, it's called. It often happens. Not to me, it doesn't. If it can do that when it's dead, I sure hate to meet it somewhere alive. <laughs> him too. I keep thinking it was my fault. How could it be? It never would have happened if he hadn't gone to get me that present. No, I've lost it. You mustn't think of it that way, Carol. Why did I have to drop it in that cave? I wanted so much to keep it, Mother. Forget about it now, dear. You have your homework to get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow. 
Oh, and I forgot, Mike called you twice before you got home from school and said he would be at his father's theater. Oh, thanks, Mother. Simpson, can I talk to Mike? Mike, hmm? you want it on the phone. Oh, okay, thanks. Hi, Mike. This is Carol. You said you'd take me out to the cave to find the bracelet. You don't mean right now, do you? If you can get away. Please, Mike. Oh, Carol, not today. My dad just got in a new picture, and I haven't even seen it yet. Something about puppet people. It sounds pretty wild. Please? Okay, Carol. I, I think I can borrow Joe's car again. Only don't come by the house for me. I don't want Mother to know I'm going out there. All right, I'll be, I'll be down at the corner in 15 minutes. I'll be waiting. I'll see you, Dad. I got a date now. Where will you be? I said, where will you be if I want you? Hey, Joe. Hi. Hey, um... You remember that five bucks I loaned you? Sure, it was last Christmas, and I paid it back. Oh, well, all I mean is, well, I'm your friend, you know that. You want to borrow five bucks? Oh, no, no. Could Carol and I use your wagon for a couple of hours? Again? What's the big deal? Well, what do you care? Look, we're friends, Joe, just remember. Why aren't you coming to the rehearsal? Look, my mouth is getting tired. Are we friends or aren't we? Okay, okay. The car's in the driveway. You'll find the keys the in the glove compartment. Where else? Why do I have so many friends? Thanks, Joe. Sure. Come on, Joe, we got problems. No soaps or salt limits. I told you. Look, we gotta get in. The dance is tomorrow night. Well, oh, the cats will have a blast if we don't swing solid. Hey, let's get the janitor. Maybe you'll open the pad. Oh, not with Mr. Eggleg still in there. Well, they can't hang us for trying, can they? Hugo! Hugo! Hey, Hugo! Hugo! Who's calling Hugo? Well, now, what's the matter here? We want in. We've got to develop our talents. Well, you'll have to use the auditorium until further notice. Principal's was orders. No can do. The drama class is there. I can't help that. Kingman is just here checking up. Told me in particular not to let nobody in. Well, Kingman didn't meet us. He meant squares. We're the coolest zoologists in town. No, sirree. The moving people are coming here tonight to move that thing to the university. You can rehearse all you want to afterwards. In the dead of night, Hugo were only little kids. Mommy wouldn't let us. Well, all right, you monsters. And now I want you to behave yourself. Don't mock you with that thing. Dig that? Now, the first guy who steps on Daddy Longlegs is going to hear from Hugo. Yeah. through the auditorium. Let's blow this place. It gives me the creeps. What is it, Superman? Chickening out? Well, certainly not. Well, then let's stop goofing up, huh? Now, guys, let's start with the opening number. And don't go to sleep on it. Play with everything you've got. Loud up to wake the dead, huh? Play it good and loud. Okay. Oh. 
Hey, what goes on here? It's the drama class. What else? All right, either you come in or get out. I don't stand there and scream. We're rehearsing. Sanders funeral. I'll get it. Great guy Pete Sanders was. You've got plenty to live up to. Sheriff's office, cable speaking. What? All right, Mr. Kingman. I'll meet you at the school. You stay here and answer the phone. Helen. What is it, Art? It'd be a good idea if you stayed inside the house for a while. Oh, well, I was just going to take the baby for his checkup and do some shopping for dinner. Stay in the house, Helen, no matter what. I'll be back as soon as I can. Now, it probably won't surprise you to know, if you didn't already know, that the uh, some of the movies playing at the theater there are, of course, Bert I. Gordon films, including some that we're going to be uh, watching in the upcoming weeks. Now, another one of his films, uh, Attack of the Puppet People, that gets an interesting mention in uh, Bert's book, and uh, I did not know this, and I love that this little anecdote is kind of buried in the back of this book, a real, uh, a real bombshell here that he just kind of tosses as an aside. Now, he talks about uh, making Attack of the Puppet People, and that one of the big things to come out of it was that it, uh, it was kind of the film debut of his daughter, Susan. She would go on to appear in a few of his films, including one that we're going to be seeing uh, in a few weeks. And he mentions that the second big thing to come out of uh, Puppet People, uh, I'll just read it here, the second Puppet People happening completely changed the life of President Richard Nixon. Oh, how about that? In fact, it created a major event in our country, the Watergate Affair. All because I made the Puppet People movie. As one of our major news publications reported, on June 17, 1972, police arrested five men breaking into the Democratic Party offices in the Watergate complex, which ultimately led to the resignation of the United States President Richard Nixon. 
The undercover district cop, who was the first to bust up the Watergate burglars, revealed that the lookout in the Howard Johnson Motel across the street didn't see the per police arrive because he was watching a thriller, Attack of the Puppet People, on television and failed to warn the thieves in time. Back to Gordon here. So what was it that caused my daughter Susan's acting career to be launched by her timely arrival on my Puppet People set? Or the Watergate screw-up happening because Puppet People was on television? Was it fate? Was it just a coincidence? Was it just the power of film? We'll never know, but what a great little uh, inside historical tidbit there for uh, one of the films from Kenosha Born, Bert I. Gordon. Live Scream Theater? Brought to you by the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival. It is happening May 6th through the 20th. Passes are on sale now. Tickets will be on sale May 6th. Individual tickets. Get it all. Get all the information you need at mkefilm.org. Once again, Milwaukee Record, we are the proud sponsors of the Cinema Hooligante program. Kind of the horror and uh, just a little offbeat films uh, in the program. Always really honored to present that program. Speaking of which, let's get back to our program. Earth versus the spider. Take a good look at Elvira because TV24 and 93 QFM are having an Elvira lookalike contest. If you think you can look like her, send TV24 a photo of yourself in full length costume. Write your name, address, and phone number on the back and send it to TV24 by Friday, February 8th. You'll have a chance to win a color TV plus other great prizes and a chance to host your own movie on TV24 dressed as Elvira. Are you the Elvira of Milwaukee? Prove it. Hello, darling. Watch The Real Elvira this Saturday night at 9. She's hosting Dr. Heckle and Mr. Hype, an anti-classic. Like I said, watch The Real Elvira and then compare her to me as I host my very own movie. Watch Elvira at 9, then watch me at 11. We really do look alike, you'll see.
Sheriff Cagle speaking. How's that call to the Capitol coming? Well, hurry it up. We want action here. Get off the street! Hello? Hello? Sheriff Cagle, River Falls. Hello? Get off the street! Hello? Hello? Operator, I've been cut off. Okay, sister. Well, that's that. The long distance lines are down. I got my motorcycle out back. How long would it take you to get to Springdale on it? Maybe an hour, maybe less. Go ahead and get the governor on the phone. Tell him we've got to have troops from Fort Brown, also flamethrowers and artillery. Tell him we need DDT. No good. That stuff just stunned it. All right, Dave, on your way. Wait, Dave. too soon for the troops to be here. I know. I thought they might fly a few men in with whirlybirds. I'll give them time. Hey, isn't that Jake? Jake from State Farm. Wait a minute, Jake. Where to, Jake? I'm evacuating. That darn monster run me out of house and home. Well, which way was it heading? Toward Maple Street. I've had it. Maple Street. Tell him... I think that's just right now. Come on, just a little bit.
be all right, Helen. It's gone away. Help you be here soon. Now take it easy. Just... Sheriff? Any news from Springdale yet? Not a word. Good. Kingman says the spider's headed south along the old Higgins Road. At least the town's safe. Mike, will you help me look for it? Yeah, okay. This isn't getting us anywhere. Why don't I buy you another bracelet? Wouldn't be the same at all. Besides, I'm broke. Well, when was the last time you remember having it? Well, it was just before I fell in the web. I was up there, and then I stumbled. If I dropped it then, it, it should be around here somewhere. Mike. Find it? No, but there's an opening down here. Do you think it could have fallen through? Hey, it looks like there's another cave down there. Maybe we can get into it through this opening over here. Come on. spiders around here. Well, help ought to be here soon now. Sheriff Cagle again, sister. How soon before those long distance lines to Springdale are going to get fixed? Another two hours, maybe. Okay, sister. Keep working on it. Open the door, will you, Simpson? right back where we started. And all we've got to do is sit right here and wait for that thing to come back and finish us all off. I was all in favor of sealing off that cave some time ago while the monster was still in it. Wasn't I, Kingman? You can do it right now. It went back to the cave. 
Uh, yes, sir, I've seen it. The thing to do is to get lumber out there and board that entrance up tight. Boards won't hold it. Any better ideas? You're the road foreman, aren't you, Mr. Haskell? I am. Do you have enough dynamite to blow up the cave entrance? I can blow up half that hill if you want me to. Okay, Sam, go ahead and get the stuff. We'll meet you at your place. Right. Simpson, you've been sworn in. Take care of the office for me till I get back and call the coroner. The rest of you boys come with us. Sheriff's office, Simpson speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Simpson. This is Joe, Mike's friend. Remember me? Oh, yes, Joe. What's the trouble? I, I better tell the sheriff. Well, he's not here now. Maybe you'd better tell me. What is it, Joe? Well, it's about my heap. Somebody mooched it off of me today to go for a ride. And, and it isn't back yet. After what that spider did this afternoon, well, well I was just wondering if... Uh... Well, it's a good idea to check. Uh, what's the boy's name? Well, it was Mike and Carol Flynn. Did they get back yet? No. At least I haven't seen them. Did they say where they might be heading? No, sir. Thank you, Joe. I'll look into it. Hello. Uh, Mrs. Flynn, this is Mike Simpson's father. This long to come in, did it? Sure it did. You just forget. What time is it? I don't know. I haven't got a watch. I've got a feeling it's late. It's still light. Don't kid me. That's luminous algae. It grows on cave walls and it shines. Don't you remember Mr. Kingman told our science class? All right, but, but from the next cavern you'll see daylight outside. You want to bet? We've never been in this cave before either. We're lost. I know. Well, let's hurry up and find our way out. Well, that's what I'm doing. I figure if we just go straight ahead, we'll come to the part we know. Come on, let's go this way. people through here before. George Weston. Lost. April 9th, 1902. Mike! Oh, starved to death. I'm getting awfully worried, Mike. Me too, Carol. Oh, why did I ever have to bring you down here? It's all my fault. Forgive it. What do you suppose your mother's thinking? Well, they wouldn't tell her. She's in the hospital having a baby. What about your dad? Uh, he's a pretty good Joe. I, I think he can take it. My mother can't. Not after what happened to my father. Don't make yourself feel bad, Carol. Don't you either, Ben. You know, all of a sudden I feel hungry. Me too. I just remembered I've got a candy bar with me.
Welcome back. As you may have noticed in the opening credits, the uh, cave sequences, while not exactly filmed in Carlsbad uh, Cavern in uh, New Mexico, uh, the, the background plates were shot there. Carlsbad Caverns National Park there in New Mexico. And uh, Bert, Mr. Bert I. Gordon, Mr. B.I.G., talks a little bit about that in his book. He says, while most of the action scenes of the movie taking place in mammoth caves and caverns, I decided to see if we could film them in the largest and deepest caverns and caves in America, and possibly the world, the famous Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico. I phoned the Carlsbad Caverns National Park office and made an appointment for a meeting, and was soon on a plane on my way to New Mexico, extremely happy with visions whirling around in my head of the great scenes I would be able to film in the wonderful underground world. Wrong. It seemed as if it wasn't going to happen. Carlsbad Caverns National Park people were extremely congenial, taking me on a private tour of many of the caves and canyons that would be great for our movie. They agreed to our filming there with one stipulation. We would not be permitted to light the caverns in any way, because as they explained, light fosters the growth of microscopic organisms that destroy the cavern surfaces. Kind of a big problem. Uh, so. Bert takes off, uh, kind of distraught, but then he strikes upon a brilliant idea. I made the arrangements with the Carlsbad Caverns National Parks people for us to return to capture the splendor of their caves and canyons for our movie. However, instead of bringing our cast and crew and equipment with us, I came back with a single assistant and my 4x5 speed graphic camera with its tripod to photograph background plates using the available dim lighting and making very long time exposures. And that's what I did. I returned to Carlsbad a few weeks later and captured magnificent photographs of their canyons and caves on 4x5 fine grain film with exposures at times 30 or 40 minutes in length. The Carlsbad Caverns National Park people were tremendously cooperative, closing to tourists the various caverns in which I wanted to shoot and providing us with whatever assistance we required. Uh, Clearly, background planes, but I think I think it really uh, I really like the look of it, and I, I like that he went out there. You know, this wasn't just some stock image that he had lying around of like caves. Actually, flew out to New Mexico, flew out to Carlsbad, and took some pictures. I love that. That is Bert I Gordon for you, Mr. B I G. Once again, the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival, May 6th through 20th, the proud presenter of this program. We are the proud presenters, uh, Milwaukee Record. Proud presenters of the Cinema Hooligante program, there are tons of great films, nearly 90 feature films, well over 100 short films in various programs. Check it all out at mkefilm.org. And let's get to the thrilling conclusion of our film tonight, Earth vs. the Spider. Brent Alberts, rock and roll heavyweight, a man who takes his music seriously. Joni Bowman, from global politics to the world of sport, she gets the stories other journalists just dream about. Jeff Peterson, comic comedian, a 20th century American humorist, will do anything for a good laugh. Brent, Joni, and Jeff, 6 to 10 on WLPX. Outside of bed, it's the best place to spend the morning. All right, you man, I get snappy. Let's get that gear off that truck. lets me know when she isn't coming home. Always. But today, I don't know, she just wasn't herself. She attached too much importance to that bracelet. Oh, I hope she and Mike haven't gone back to that cave. Carol, do you see? This is the place where we got lost. Now oh, I know the way it's through there. Yeah, but the spider, Mike. If we stay here, it'll find us. Come on, let's run. There's the hole we fell through. We haven't got far to go now. 
gonna clamp to the web. Spider's nest, eh, Kingman? And the spider. That's what you said last time. Now, this time it's for sure. It's got to die. No living organism can survive for long once its food supply is cut off. We'll be ready to blow her up in a couple seconds. Well, let her blow when you're ready. <laughs> something. You seal them up. You're going to have to open that cave and get them out. Now, don't get excited. We're going to do everything for them we can. How do we go about it, Haskell? Open up the cave again? That's easy to say, Sheriff, but it's going to take some doing. Well, we blew up tons of earth and rock over that opening. Brought half the hillside down. Well, then we better start clearing it away. It'll take days, maybe a week even. Well, there isn't that much time. If the spider doesn't get them, the bad air will. Well, then we better get going. The sooner the better. You've got a car. Go into town and get them to send out a bulldozer. Wait, maybe a quicker way than that. See that flat shelf a little higher up the mountain? Suppose we dug straight down from there. How about it, Haskell? Looks good to me. Let's get those ropes, picks, and shovels out of that truck. Here's where we go to work. Look at it like that, Mrs. Flynn. You've got to remember that cave is a big place, and those kids have a lot of sense. They'll find places where the spider can't get at. If we do dig our way in, what's to keep it from getting at us? I don't know. What do you say, Kingman? Well, we've got to have some kind of an effective weapon against it. That's obvious. That power line across the hills. If we could bring a cable over from there. For what for? Well, let's see if we can electrocute the beast. we can find a quarter mile of insulated copper cable this side of Springdale? You might try the express office. Seems to me I saw a lot of that stuff in there. You want to go for it in the truck, Simpson? Yeah. I'm sure you wouldn't waste any time getting it back. How's it coming? Not bad, but we have plenty to go.
place we came in. I'm sure it was. It blew up the opening. Now what do we do? What was that? It sounds like blasting. I bet they know we're in here. I bet they're trying to get us out. Help! I can't hear us. Maybe, maybe if we get closer to where they're working. Help! 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 I don't want to hear! Help! 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 Carol, we hear you! We're coming! It's Kingman, they've heard us! <laughs> gets here. I thought you'd be the one to brief him on what we're doing. Well, my idea is to tie into that power line, take a couple of electrodes into the cave, get the spider between them, and turn on the juice. We want to create an electric arc, you see, so it jumps through its body like a bolt of light. You think it'll work? It could. How about electrodes? Simpson's bringing them. Have you got tools and rubber gloves? In my Jeep. All we need is the cable, and I'm ready to go. That could be Simpson now. Spider can't follow us. Don't be scared. Just hold on to me. Nothing to walk on over here. Okay. We can't get back. Give me that pick. Does that sound hollow or am I crazy? We broke through. Do you hear me? We broke through. going down after them now, Mrs. Flynn. It may take a little while before we find them, but we'll send up news as fast as we can. As soon as I get down there, pass along the cable and the electrodes. Keep it coming. See that I have plenty of slack. No telling how much I'll need once I'm below. Well, don't go down yet. Wait for the equipment. Don't wait for the equipment. See you below. Do you men follow that equipment? It's them! The 
They're coming for us. What did I tell you? Hey, we're in here. Help! 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 Why don't we split up? All right. You men stay here. Sheriff, better go armed. Yeah, let's have my rifle. Look! getting the kids off a narrow ledge they were trapped on. Excuse me. Oh, Carl. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry. I, I didn't mean to scare you this way. Honestly, I couldn't help it. Mike, you're all right? I'm okay. I guess I was a lot of trouble to you, wasn't I, Dad? Come on, son. It's all right. Everything's out of the cavern. I checked. Yeah, thanks, Jake. Good night, sir. Good night, Haskell. Thanks for everything. Sure took you long enough down there. I was checking up. Anything left behind? Nothing but a dead spider. Yeah, well, this time he's going to stay dead. Dead? and buried. Well, let's say at least until some egghead comes along and digs it up again. And there you have it. Earth versus the Spider, 1958, directed by Bert I. Gordon. We will be watching three more Bert I. Gordon films in the upcoming weeks as part of this season of Live Scream Theater. Once again, brought to you by the Milwaukee Film Festival. The 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival is happening May 6th through the 20th. Get your online passes now. It is a entirely online affair this time around again. Uh, but it was a lot of fun last time. It's, uh, it's a real great experience. Thank you to Milwaukee Film for uh, letting me do this goofy thing every year. It's a blast. I really like doing it. Thank you for watching along and chatting along. It's a blast. I really get a kick out of this. Hope you do too. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Good night. Baby, don't.
don't you cry Cause I'm gonna buy you a lullaby And it's gonna cost me eighteen ninety-five. Baby, don't you cry And eighteen ninety-five's insane For something I could get from the public domain But it is sweet like a sugar cane And it will resolve all your pain Baby, don't you cry Cause I'm gonna buy you a lullaby And it's gonna cost me eighteen ninety-five. So baby, don't you cry This lullaby is so nice Warm like a bowl of rice So much joy that it'll entice problem is that price baby don't you cry cause I'm gonna buy you a lullaby and it's gonna cost me eighteen ninety-five. so baby don't you cry its words will wipe your tears eliminate all your fears you better use it throughout the years with a cost unlike its peers baby don't you cry cause I'm gonna buy you a lullaby and it's gonna cost me eighteen ninety-five. so baby don't you cry Yeah.